All right, hello everybody. It's Corey Noel, the veteran trainer here. And something a little different today. Uh, I'm going to create a video that is gonna be based around a beginner um, circuit, I guess you could say. If you're new to one, owning a home gym. If you're new to owning a functional trainer. And if you're new to trying to start an active lifestyle and, and find a means of getting yourself back through through fitness, all right? Getting your mind right, getting your body right through uh, starting a, an active uh, lifestyle and your fitness journey, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna break down into just some simple exercises. I'm gonna talk through the form uh, so that you can identify where maybe you're making a mistake or if you're, or, or just, uh, confirm that you're doing something correct okay uh, and this is going to I hope eliminate you stressed out about the million different videos that are out there on how to do things okay with that I'm not saying this is the way to do it I'm just saying I'm going to explain and demonstrate some simple things that will help you get started so you can learn how your body reacts to starting an active lifestyle with weights and exercise and, and and make yourself a little bit more comfortable, a little more at ease, all right? And and this is gonna be similar to what I did a couple years ago when I re uh, reintroduced myself to doing weights, okay? I'm just gonna do an upper body and a lower body split uh, but I'm going to show them all you all the exercises that you really need to do to get yourself started uh, uh, and get you ready and set for getting into a more intermediate weight training uh, regime. Okay, so this is going to be something that if you practice for four weeks, your body is going to get used to it and it's going to know, okay, hey, you know, you've introduced me to this new program, this new thing. And I like it. And after four weeks, you're gonna like it, all right? And then it's gonna get you excited. And then it's gonna make you want more, want to do more, all right? And and I know this because that's what it did for me. Yes, I lifted weights years and years ago, all right? But then I hadn't lifted weights for years. And when I reintroduced myself, I reintroduced myself slowly because I, I knew if you rush it, you're gonna fall off the horse, fall off the wagon, and you're just gonna, it's just gonna be, you know, miss a day, and then all of a sudden it's gonna be missing two days, and then three days, and then you're just, you're done. If you can follow this for four straight weeks, I promise you're gonna be excited with the results that you're getting, and you're gonna yearn for more, and you're gonna to want to establish Sorry, you're not gonna to want to. You will have established that consistency. And a lot of people may disagree, but I'm a firm believer in no matter what you're doing, consistency is one of the things that is most important. If you get out of your own way and say, oh, not today, I'll just take a break. Now, if you get through what it is you gotta do, one, you're gonna feel awesome. You're gonna be glad you did it and you're gonna be raring, uh, raring and, and revved up to go for the next day, okay? So, again, this is just gonna be a simple program. Again, if you're new to the functional trainer, to the home gym, and to creating this active lifestyle for yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, please leave comments down below. I get back to everybody, all right? Again, I'm no Jedi master here when it comes to weight training. I'm just a guy who's really motivated on helping others establish an active lifestyle because I love what it's done for me and my family. All right, so follow along and I'll see you at the finish line. Cheers. Uh, the first exercise is gonna focus on the chest and this is going to be the chest press, okay? Bench press, uh, whatever you wanna call it. So if you can notice my bench here, I've got my bench set up at the lowest setting before it's actually flat, all right? So again, as a beginner, my opinion, I believe if you can find, if you set your bench up at this angle, you're gonna find a comfortable 
uh, position that's going to target uh, your chest as as much of your chest as you can. Okay, um, and the important thing here, and, and if you have a Smith machine, this is fantastic because this is going to allow you to focus on making sure you're doing it right and not having to worry about your stabilizer muscles kind of getting in the way. And what I mean by that is that you can lose focus sometimes by focusing on your stabilizer muscles because you're going to be pushing so hard. Where here, you can just focus on the movement because you're just going to be gliding straight up and down. All right? So as you set up, you want that bar when it's coming down to be kind of that mid upper chest, all right? And when you set up your arms, you want to set up just slightly wider than a shoulder width grip. And we're gonna do, and you, I want you to do what's called stacking the arms, all right? So you're gonna have your hand above your elbow, all right? In a, in a motion that's, they stay above one another as you're going up and down, okay? None of, none of like this kind of stuff. All right, you want that arm and elbow in line as you're going through the movement, all right? So, again, bar's gonna come down, mid upper chest, a little wider than shoulder width grip, all right? And when, as you're coming down too, notice, you'll notice the hand should be over the elbow and it's down and up. My arms are gonna be flared slightly in, okay? Not keep, no, you want them out too wide, you want to flare just slightly, all right? And then you're breathing in, breathing out, in and out, all right? In and out, okay? Now, find a weight that's comfortable for you to manage 12 to 15, all right? This is going to be an excellent way of shocking those muscles and waking them up and saying, holy cow, all right? I'm doing something I haven't done in either a long time or forever, all right? Okay, so try that one out first. We're gonna chalk that down as exercise number one. Okay, so next exercise is going to be back and it's going to be the lat pull down, okay? Hopefully, again, I'm gearing this towards the fact or, or the idea that you may have a functional trainer with cable machines or with uh, cable accessories and attachments on it, okay? So, if so, uh, lat pull downs is gonna be an excellent uh, exercise for your back that's gonna target like four or five of the muscles within your back, okay? Uh, granted, do this properly, all right? Okay, so you can see here, I've got the knee pads that will help keep you in place. If you don't have this, that's okay. All right, there's ways that we can work around this. All right, and I'll explain that to you in a minute. But if you do have the knee pads, you know, you slide into your position, you pull the knee pads down over your legs to hold you in place. And that's all it is, is to prevent you from being lifted up as you're going through the negative movement. All right. Okay, exercise number two is the back. All right, and uh, the exercise we're focusing on here is the lat pull downs. All right, this is an exercise, uh, and this is an excellent exercise that's gonna focus in on like five of the muscles throughout your back. Granted, you're performing it correctly. Okay, so, so, like I said, medium to probably just a little bit wider than a medium gri uh, width grip, overhand grip, keeping your back slightly arched and then pulling down and squeezing your shoulder blades together and then back up under control, but not hyperextending your arms. Down and up. Down and squeeze and up. Okay? Make sure to breathe through the movement, exhaling and inhaling, all right? Do not hold your breath. The more you focus on the breathing, the more you're providing oxygen to, uh, to the blood that's rushing through all these muscles, and then it's gonna help you get through the exercise, okay? That's exercise number two. All right, so moving on to exercise number three, and this is going to be the shoulder press, the shoulder overhead press, 
or otherwise also known as the military press. All right, we're doing on the Smith machine. Again, if you do not have a Smith, either you have a barbell or a set of dumbbells, the same principles apply, okay? So as you set up, similar to what I said, talking about the chest exercise, sorry, stumble in there. Anyway, it's stacking the arms. So as we're going through the movement, we're gonna keep our hand over our elbow as it's going up and down, all right? Our bench, it's set up to about a 70 degree angle, and then it'll probably put a little more focus on the front delts, the medial and the front, than it will the rear, unfortunately, okay? But again, this is you just getting started in a fitness journey. We're not, you're not gonna be a bodybuilder at the end of four weeks to do this. I apologize. So, set up your bench at a 70 degree angle, when you get in, again, that bench, the bar, sorry, is gonna come down to the top of your chest. Again, so a medium uh, width grip, okay? And I, like I said, stacking the, the arms, all right? So the hands over the elbows, down to a position that's comfortable, all right? And press. Always try to maintain control both down and up. That is gonna provide more stress on the muscles that you're working, all right? If you speed through the exercise, you're not getting the benefit from it that you could. And lastly, always remember to breathe. All right, and again, Bring it down to a point that's comfortable for you. If it's not comfortable or there's pain or something to that uh, matter, as you're bringing that down, don't go that low, okay? I've talked to my chiro and physio about this on many different occasions, that if there's certain injuries that, may, that you believe may prevent you from doing exercises, there's ways to either modify or work around it, okay? I, for instance, have a shoulder injury, so, but over the last couple of years of physio chiro and weightlifting, I've been able to improve that range of motion. All right, so just something to keep in mind. All right, so exercise number four is gonna be triceps, okay? And we're going to do the straight bar tricep press down or the tricep extension, all right? And this is going to help to focus on this little horseshoe or the outer tricep as long as well as the long head of your tricep okay so there's if you have a short bar like mine this has got knurling on it perfect position for you to grab all right uh, when you're getting set up for your movement all right important fact here is the platform or the base that you're setting up for this movement so i have my feet at shoulder width apart Something to take note of before we get right into it though. This is as high as my machine sets up, okay? So this is a little bit of an exaggerated movement and some people will kind of frown upon it. I've learned this from Chris Bomstead, who's the four time Mr. Olympia Classic Physique. He does the exaggerated movement too because it really, as long as you're not speeding through it, it's re you're gonna feel that through your triceps. Amazing, amazing, okay? So you set up back slightly arched. We don't need to be sticking it way out or anything like that, but I'm slightly arched again because of the height here. I'm six foot tall and I just, if I slightly arch my back, it's gonna give me, provide me with the range of motion that I need for accomplishing this movement. All right, so head up and then as you press down, you're slightly pressing out and away from your body, okay? You're not pressing it down into your body, okay? We're pressing down and away, all right? So, and at the bottom of the movement, you're flexing those triceps. You know, you're squeezing those triceps, all right? And as we come up, normally you would say to stop here, okay? But we come up because I'm gonna do this exaggerated thing, bring it back down, all right? And then bring it back down. We're not flying through the movement, and it's not momentum. It's just providing a little bit more range of motion to target a little bit more of those triceps, okay? And then lastly, as always, breathing. 
focus on the breathing. Everything you do, breathing is so much more important than people give it credit for. The worst thing you can do is hold your breath. There we go. All right, so that is exercise number four, the tricep extension, all right, or press down. All right, exercise number five, and the last exercise for day one, all right, is going to be biceps, okay? So if you have a rope uh, that was provided with your functional trainer, excellent, okay? What we're gonna be doing here is the, uh, I'm calling it the, uh, the, the rope hammer curl, okay? The rope cable machine hammer curl. <laughs> All right, so as we're doing this exercise, we're gonna maintain a rigid platform, okay? So our, our body is gonna be stiff as a board, all right? And we're just simply holding on to that rope, keeping those elbows tucked in nice and tight, and then we're bringing it in and up, okay? I'm gonna stand probably a 45 degree angle from the cage, all right? And that's gonna provide a good amount of resistance through the whole movement, okay? Through the positive, or sorry, the neg, uh, sorry. Through the positive and the negative, all right? Just like this. All right, so grabbing your weight. Again, comfortable weight. So you can see I'm at probably, the rope is, or the cable is at about a 45 degree angle. Elbows tucked in and just up, all right? Getting that full squeeze down. Again, another important fact, again, just like the lat pull-downs, do not hyperextend your arms. Keep that focus on the biceps, all right? Keep that stress on the biceps. Up and down. Down, all right? And as always, breathing. That squeeze at the top. No momentum. Do all these exercises with weights that is comfortable. To feel that burn. And not having to use any momentum to get through the exercise. All right, and the one thing I forgot to mention on exercises two, three, and four, we're focusing everything here on that 12 to 15 rep range, okay? All right, so that is our Day one exercises, all right? That is a complete upper body of basic exercises that have stood the test of time that are gonna help you to establish your active lifestyle as you start your fitness journey, okay? Um, the one thing I did forget to mention, I did mention the 12 to 15, all right? Start out with three sets, okay? Your beginning, start out with three sets. As you progress, say through the first week, maybe increase it to four but four is more than enough, all right, to, uh, to, to take you through this first four weeks of training, all right? Cheers. Okay, so we've gone through day one so far. Day two, very straightforward. Day two is going to be your 30 minutes of strenuous uh, cardio activity, you know, whether that be walking, cycling, jogging, rowing, uh, whatever the case may be, okay? But as long as you're maintaining 30 minutes of cardiovascular activity, increasing the heart rate in a safe manner that provides you with some sort uh, of, of exercise for that day, okay? For myself, I did rowing, and I did 30 minutes of rowing every day too. All right, so now we're gonna move on to day three. And day three, if you haven't guessed it by now, it's gonna be lower body. And for myself, this is real simple. We're not doing a lot of exercises here. Uh, and as you guessed it, we're gonna be doing squats, okay? Because squats is a, as difficult and hard as they can be, they are a movement that you don't need any equipment to perform. I started this exercise just my own, purely my own body weight. I've got knee injuries, uh, and they were pretty bad at the time when I reintroduced myself into my fitness journey. So I'm gonna demonstrate doing them without weights. I'm gonna demonstrate doing them with the, the, the Smith machine, all right? All right, so as a 
When it comes to squats, there's several different ways of doing them. I just, I'm going to teach you just the, what I did, all right? And it's real simple, not a lot of technique here. The only thing I want to emphasize is keeping your feet pointed forward, all right? Keep your feet pointing forward, shoulder width apart, okay? And when you go down, I want you bringing your knees down as close to a 45 degree angle as you can. Now for some of us, it could be difficult. And, and this was difficult for me for a long time. Uh, I've got uh, a severe knee injury on my left and I've got knee injury on my right, okay? But that's why I'm gonna demonstrate doing them non-weight loaded here, okay? So if you just keep your hands out in front of you and you're just coming down, and up, down, and up. And don't force it down too fast because you don't want to bounce and you want to injure that meniscus that's along the back of your knees there, okay? So if you're moving under control, up under control, okay? And as always, breathing. So you can see that from the side. So as we go down, as low as we can, comfortably. All right, and make sure those feet are pointing forward. Just, yeah. All right, and your back is gonna be slightly arched, but you wanna to try to keep your back arched, but you wanna to try to maintain uh, a vertical stance as much as possible and keep your knees over your feet. You don't wanna be going forward as you're going down and up through this movement, okay? So that is the non-weighted version. To add a little aspect of safety in there, you take your Smith bar, and if you need, if balance is an issue, just holding onto your Smith bar, not using it to lift yourself up and down, but holding onto your Smith bar for balance, and then just allowing yourself to go up and down through the movement. All right. So. Those two great options if you're still dealing with injuries, all right? Okay, so next, I'm gonna give you a quick demo on doing this with the Smith machine, all right? And the same principles will apply if you're using the free, uh, if you're using your Olympic barbell, okay? So, important things here, again, is where you put it on your neck. You don't want it sitting along the top of your neck, all right? You want this sitting on your traps which is just a little bit below the bottom of your neck. And I'll show you that when I step in. Um, next, again, our shoulder width apart, okay? And when you take your, uh, when you grab the bar itself, this is going to be a point of uh, helping you provide, or providing you with balance, okay? So uh, there's many different variations of holding the bar. Some people say get in as tight as possible. Some people have it nice out and wide personal preference here okay whatever is most comfortable for you you know i've done this both ways in tight and out wide okay so um breathing all right breathing is very important here so as you're in the the bottom of the movement you want to exhale to help explode that back up okay so you're breathing in all right as you move through the move uh, as you go through the movement <laughs> all right so stepping in focusing on your your uh, feet first shoulder width apart all right you're going to be you're planting yourself in the center of the bar so that's why i've got my hands out as wide as possible first i'm finding that center point all right so now it's going to be head up i'm going to lift i'm going to bring in my hands just a little bit all right and then when we go down through the movement I want to keep my head looking upwards, okay? That is going to ensure you're keeping the airway open. And you're allowing that flow of oxygen, okay? You keep your head down, it has a better chance of closing off your airway. Not giving you the oxygen, not allowing you to take in the oxygen that you need. All right, so again, as you go down, you're sticking your butt up to the back, keeping your back arched, and you're keeping your knees, hopefully, over your feet as much as possible. You do not want to lean forward during this movement. They are very taxing exercise on your whole body. 
but I swear that you are gonna love the results and that you're gonna appreciate starting at square one and focusing on, on uh, working on your technique and your form first and as you progress through the weight load, all right? So that, um, if you can aim again for the 12 to 15 rep range, here I was doing five to six sets, okay? And it was a combination of just non-weight loaded. And then as I introduced weights, I was doing a couple sets without, and I was doing four or so sets afterwards, all right, on the bar with some weight. And it was very light, okay? Do not, uh, do not let your ego get in the way. Focus on the movement first before you start increasing that weight load, all right? And, I, and you'll reap the benefits, okay? That was simply day three, all right? All I did was squats, all right? And as you know now, if you look through all these exercises, these are all exercises that have stood the test of time for decades, all right? And these are tried and true. So these are very simple, not very difficult to harness the proper technique and form, you know, and to help you get on your way to an active lifestyle and to that, and, and providing you a means of getting to the goals you've set for yourself. Okay, so hopefully this three-day plan uh, helps to get you started and get you on that path of uh, providing you a means uh, to reaching your goals, okay? Um, important, the four weeks, consistency is the key here. Day one, upper, day two, cardio, day three, lower, all right? And as you progress, if there's something you want to add a little bit, just don't get too crazy, okay? I, I, uh, I didn't add a lot. I didn't vary a lot from these uh, exercises as I went through my first four weeks. And then once I, was, I, peaked, I reached my four weeks, then I was like, okay, now I'm ready, you know, to start breaking it down into body groups, all right? So, and we can discuss that one later. Any comments you have, please leave them down below. I hope there was a, some takeaway here for you as you start your journey and as you uh, just purchased your functional trainer to start your home gym. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions and provide you with any help that you need, all right? So don't be afraid to reach out. I answer everyone's comments and, and I, I love it, okay? So with that, happy training. Enjoy your functional trainer. And Corey Noel, the veteran trainer, I'll see you next time. Cheers, out.